Cool. Uh, my name is Tiago Forte. I'm the host of this uh, online workshop demonstration. This is live writing in Rome. So Rome Research is a new note-taking knowledge management app. Uh, it's come out the past couple of years that a lot of people are interested in, you for example. Um, and we have just launched a course which Nat Eliasson teaches called Effortless Output in Rome, which is on our school platform called Forte Academy. And we wanted to just do a little demonstration uh, of what it's like to, to do an actual specific task in Rome, which is write Nat's popular weekly newsletter, which you should all subscribe to called, I think it's Monday Medley, right? Yep, you got it. So I love this because this is an actual, this isn't a demo or a sample or example. This is an actual email that goes out to how many people each week, Matt? It's about 25,000 now. So like this is the very front edge of Nat's business and life. Um, and it has a huge impact on a lot of things as I'm sure we'll hear about, but um, this is what it looks like behind the scenes in Rome. Um, yeah. So let's, let's get started. Sweet. I can go ahead and start sharing my screen here. Okay, can everyone see this? And drop a thumbs up or something, cool. Uh, and before we dive in, I wanted to say first, thank you everyone for joining. Uh, Tiago, people can ask questions and stuff as they go, right? And that'll be fed to you or Will or someone? Yes, Will, could you keep an eye on the, on the chat as usual? Will do. Awesome. So what we'll do is I'll probably talk in <clears throat> like five, 10 minute segments until I get to good stopping points that we could do Q and A, things like that. And uh, we're not using slides. This is all going to be live in Rome. I have to do this every week, right? This newsletter. So I thought it'd be super fun to show how I do it in Rome because the ability to write this newsletter uh, a lot more efficiently and honestly make it a lot better was part of what attracted me to Rome in the first place. So uh, we're going to dive in. I know a lot of the people joining are already getting the medley. There's a mix of kind of like people who already get this, people who are uh, just in the building a second brain Tiago world of things. So uh, if you haven't seen a medley before, this is what my weekly newsletter looks like, where it's a little bit of preamble about anything that I've been working on. Uh, and then uh, kind of a link roundup and reading roundup from <clears throat> the last week with some you know, like interesting data or some interesting articles I read, and then usually tying in stuff that's been talked about in past medleys. So we've had an ongoing theme about TikTok recently and, you know, should the U.S. ban it, should it not? What are the actual risks involved with, you know, TikTok gaining social media dominance? Talk about certain themes a lot, like education is kind of a really common theme. And it's really just things that I'm interested in and things that a lot of my friends are interested in. And I try to read a pretty diverse set of things each week so that I can uh, put this newsletter together each week. And it's actually turned into a really nice uh, like forcing function to use Chris Sparks's terminology, where uh, now I know that I have to keep this good <laughs> each week. And so I have to keep, you know, stay on top of my reading habit and make sure that I'm collecting a good set of things so that I can feature it uh, each week in the newsletter. So Rome is really, really cool for this uh, just because of how it lets you organize and use information. And in the presentation, I'm going to kind of walk you through how I do this each week. And I might finish in the hour. We'll see. It usually takes me longer than that, but I don't usually have the uh, pressure of doing it live. So uh, each week, the medley starts off kind of like this. Not like this. It's the wrong page. Matt, could you kind of like this? Matt, for people who are are new to Rome, really explain yeah. like each of the things you click, or drop down, or keyboard shortcuts that that tend to whiz by really fast. Could you kind of explain what you're doing there? Yeah, that that's a really good tip. So uh, basically, what's going on here is. Rome, similar to Evernote or Notion, is a collection of individual pages, right? Uh, and the big difference in Rome is this kind of built-in uh, ability to do bi-directional linking between pages. So in this case, this is the page for Medley 225. The one before was the page for Medley 224, right? This is the one that I sent out last week. And then 225 is the one that I'll be sending out next week. So when I go up here, and I'm clicking on this. These are just recent pages that I've worked on. So this is an article I published on Wednesday. These are some of the places we're going to go to in future videos. This is an article I'm working on for next week. But 
Uh, basically, this is just like the search bar. So if you're in Evernote or Notion or anything and you're looking for pages, you can bring this up and then we could type 225 to try to find, you know, Medley 225 and it's going to filter out everything with 225 in it. And then I'll just click on Medley 225. And you know what I'm actually going to do is this is the one downside of Rome search feature is that it's also a way to create pages. And so I accidentally made a page just called 225. And so I'm just going to delete that because otherwise we're going to keep landing on it over and over again uh, throughout this video. So on the Melly 225 page, uh, right now I have basically nothing prepared for it, uh, <laughs> which is a kind of common situation to end up in at the end of the week if I haven't done a good job organizing my stuff for it during the week. I've kind of artificially reduced the things for it this week so I can show you the whole process, but a lot of the times I might open this page and you can see there's only two other pages in my Rome database right now that are linked to uh, Medley 225. So this is a tweet that uh, Kyle Harrison shared on Twitter, which is a link to a YouTube video. Uh, and we can actually click this to go to um, the tweet that he sent. So if we open this up, this is going to show us. And this is a, uh, a YouTube video, kind of like a, oops, don't want to play that. But it's a, it's a YouTube video. It's kind of a joke about uh, learning English. People say they're sinking, and uh, the German guy thinks they're saying thinking. Uh, it was a reference to something a friend Neil and I tweeted about a podcast made you think that we're uh, bringing back in the near future. But I just thought this was really funny. So uh, I tagged it as, you know, funny and just for fun, and then Medley 225. And the value of this is that when I'm on the Medley 225 page, I've got this page here. And if I wanted to include it, in the newsletter, I can kind of open it in the sidebar and I could say, okay, I can ignore this. This is kind of like the metadata for uh, the tweet, but this is the YouTube link that I want to include. So I'm going to just put it in here as a placeholder. Can I ask a couple of questions? Now? Yeah, go ahead. How did you open that sidebar? Hmm. If you shift click on anything, and this is actually one of my favorite features of Rome that makes it really different from uh, like Notion in particular is if, if I were in Notion and I wanted to go back and forth between these two pages, I'd have to kind of like keep flipping between them or like open a separate Notion instance. Rome has this built-in sidebar where you can shift click on anything to open it up as something on the side. And so now I've opened up both of these. I've opened up this tweet from Kyle as well as my article on uh, podcast highlighting. And so if I was starting off medley, I might say something like, this week, I published an article on making podcast listening more productive. You know, Tiago, is there any way to turn off the prompts to... Mm, oh, here we go. There we go. All right. Uh, the, you know the floating meeting panel thing that pops up when you're screen sharing? Every time it pops up, it takes me out of being able to type, but I think it's okay now. Um, oh on listening, on, podcast, on making podcast listening more. No, it's still doing it. All right, one sec. I'm gonna have to find a way to get rid of this thing. It, like a little sharing bar, you mean? Yeah, yeah. Or is there any way to make it so that I'm not getting chat notifications? I think In the there. chat, there is a, a actual instruction someone left on how to do that. There is, okay. I think I just got it, but let's see if, if uh, it comes back or not. But uh, I know I did, okay, sorry, I gotta go look at, somebody just explained how to do it in the chat. I think. Oh no, because it's about something else. Shift okay. click a link, no, no that's not it. Yeah, that's Command control okay. option eight. <laughs> um, I'm gonna, I'm just gonna try to work through it. I probably won't type quite as much, but we'll, We'll do our best here. Okay, so anyway, one of the first things that I'd wanna put in the newsletter is anything new that I published that week. So I might say something like this, you know, I published an article on making podcast listening more productive. And then uh, by opening this in the sidebar, I don't have to go to the page, copy the link, right? Go back and then paste it, right? I could just do it you know, right from here, right? Where I can copy it, put it in. And then uh, I've got like this one part of the medley 
pulled into it. So the sidebar is cool because then as I'm kind of like working on what I want to say to describe it, I've got like all the information right here. So I can be working on the medley in one pane and be looking at everything I included in the article uh, in the other. So I wouldn't do it for my own article, but as you'll see later on, I'm going to quote things from other uh, articles and stuff that I've read. And this makes it super, super easy to do that. Uh, the other thing that's really nice with Realm is you've got this like bi-directional linking feature, right? So you can see that in my podcast listening article, I'm linking to Medley 225, right? Which is the reason that the podcast listening article is showing up down here in the references to Medley 225, right? They're kind of like connected together. And so this is what tells me that this is something I want to include uh, in the Medley this week when I'm on the Medley page. But at this point, I've already added it to the Medley, right? I don't need it down here anymore to remind me to include it. So I can actually add a little tag here that says added. And then in the references to the Medley 225, I can filter it to hide anything that has the added tag. And now the only stuff that's left as a linked reference are the stuff that I haven't added that added tag to, right? If I go back here and delete it, now it's gonna show up again, right? But as soon as I add it, it's gonna go away. Uh, and this is really nice because this kind of lets me create a to-do list of things to include uh, in the newsletter. And then I can sort of, I can start working through these references to find things to bring into it. And then once I go ahead and close this out, since I also opened Kyle's tweet over here, I could just go ahead and I'm gonna copy this Twitter link. I'm gonna say, uh, this would go towards the bottom of the newsletter where I'd say something like, just for fun, I'd make this a heading. And then I'd say, uh, my friend Kyle shared this video of, all right, I'm just gonna put this for now because I think the typing is just gonna be too hard with the chat popping up, but that's fine. Uh, anyway, so, and then I've got this added and that will disappear as well, right? Uh, but this is obviously not much of a newsletter. <laughs> so uh, we wanna get more material for it. Uh, and there's a couple of places we can go for this. If you're in building a second brain or you've done, or you've read anything on getting things done or whatnot, then you know the value of having an inbox, right? And for me, the inbox in Rome is stuff that needs to be processed. Yeah. So whenever okay. I- Real quick, I think I, I can, have you quickly turn off chat notifications? It's, it's oh, can near I? Okay. your Zoom app, like the app preferences. All right. Turn that up. Yeah, one sec. I'm going to stop sharing and do that. Because yeah, it would be nice if I could. And then go to the chat sub menu. There we go. Okay. Did you see the bounce application thing? Um, oh, the bounce application one. I just turned off all push notifications. So let me see. Okay. Let's see if that does it. That's a good catch. All right. So typing is, feels like typing is the main, the main show here, isn't it? <laughs> I know typing is a lot of it. So, all right. Uh, let's let's go back quickly and just see if I can type. From Kyle shared this video on. It's funny. Oh yeah, I think it's not happening anymore. All right, that's great. Cool. I think we're in business. All right. So, I've got you know the first couple of things, but like I said, it's not much of a newsletter with just these two links. So there's a couple of places that I like to store information that I want to include in the medley. And the inbox, again, if you're familiar with building a second brain or getting things done, uh, is a great place to do that. So basically, whenever I add a new piece of information to Realm, I tag it with this inbox tag, which tells me that this is something that needs to be processed. I either need to uh, update my notes from it, or I need to add a bit more context to it, or I need to file it somewhere else, add some more tags, anything like that. So this is just a really good holding place. And there's a lot of ways to get information into your inbox. So for example, if I were on my daily notes page, which is the page that you kind of like start or you start on whenever you open Rome for the day, I might add something like, 
did the live writing workshop with Tiago. And this is going to link this text to Tiago's page for, and I'm going to link this to Rome course V2. Oops, on, so then, to bring up that little drop down, you're just hitting bracket twice, right? Yeah, you just hit bracket twice, and then you can start typing anything, and it'll help you link it to that page. So we could add like building a second brain here, and these would these would all have it tagged together. So I'll show you what that means in a second. Live writing workshop with Tiago, building a second brain, and then I'm also going to throw in um, to 25, right? And so now, just from this one line of text. And I'd probably under it, I'd put, you know, link to the Zoom TK. So I know to uh, add the recording to it once we have it done. But now this one block of text is linked to all four of these pages. If I go back to Medley 225, here's this note and, you know, the reminder that I should include it. If I go to the Building a Second Brain page, you know, here it is, right? The same note from today. Uh, and this is where it gets like really powerful for uh not only recording information but managing tasks or even like building a crm right so if i went to tiago's page i could see that we talked about it on this day if i ever wanted to like follow up on a conversation tiago and i ever had uh so it, it gets pretty powerful pretty quickly just with really simple things like linking pages together um now, and I, then you know can I ask mm -hmm. why don't you use your daily notes as an inbox why do you use an inbox tag so the reason i do that is because I don't want to have to go back through all of my daily notes to find things that need to be processed. Uh, this is kind of like the inbox for the inbox to me. So what I might do, uh, you know what, it didn't fix the notifications thing, um, but that's okay, uh, is by I can add this inbox tag. And now instead of having to scroll through my past days, right, instead of having to go, okay, you know, what do I need to process from the 27th or what do I need to process from the 26th? I can just go to inbox and process all of it. This also avoids having to make tasks to process things because if I start having to do's, you know, for like add the Zoom video, then suddenly my like knowledge management tasks are intermingled with my like project tasks. So if we were on like the Rome course page, you can see that there's all of these to-dos for all of the videos to record. And I wanna, I wanna keep to-dos being focused on stuff that needs to get done. Whereas I want information to process to just sit in my inbox for when I need to you know, add more details to it or add it to a future medley. Uh, but that you can totally use the daily notes as an inbox. And I think a lot of people do. I've just found that this workflow goes a little bit better for me. Uh, and it makes it really, really clear what information needs to be processed versus just tasks to be done. Okay. Um, yeah, so going back to the inbox, right? We've got all of this stuff that could go into the medley. And, you know, there's this question of, well, how does it get to the inbox, right? The daily notes page is one really good way to do it. Uh, but the other way that I'm doing more of now is Readwise actually launched their Rome integration. So uh, what's cool with them is if you're in Readwise uh, and if you're already using it, I know you talk about it a lot in building a second brain as well, but for those who uh, don't use it, what Readwise does is it can like pull your highlights from everywhere you read information. Uh, so like Kindle, Instapaper, Pocket, Medium, you can do it on Twitter. You can use this highlighting tool called Hypothesis. You can save podcast highlights with air. It's super, super robust. Um, you can pull in all this information from everywhere and then Readwise can send it out to uh, Evernote, Notion, and now Rome as well. So if you, if you are using Rome uh, with, and you want to use it with Readwise, you can go to the URL Magical Trash Panda, <laughs> which, is, <laughs> which is a reference to like a, a joke. I think Connor made in a conversation with you once, Tiago, about... Rome being like the magical trash panda of information. Um, and what's really cool with, with the Readwise Rome integration is you can like customize all the metadata that comes through. So if we're looking at something in my Rome database here, like, uh, like this, I didn't write any of this. Readwise filled all of this in for me. Uh, all I did was read this article on Instapaper and make these highlights and then Readwise plugged these highlights into my database and added all of this information for me. Very cool. So, yeah, right? Like, so now I know this was the author. Here's the exact URL if I want to find it. 
And you can see that it can detect if it's an article, add the article's tag. If it's a book, add the book's tag. If it's a tweet, add the tweet's tag. And so, you know, for me, I use this article's tag a ton. Like opening this page sometimes crashes my database because there's, yeah, 276 linked articles here that I can go sort through. And, you know, if I wanted to filter by articles on, uh, you know, COVID-19, right? I've got 33 articles here related to COVID-19 that I could look through. And we're going to use this later for building out the medley. But um, Readwise fills in all this information. So I don't have to do that much else. You know, I, I, nobody recommended this. So I'm going to delete that. The medley, I'm going to change this from backlog to 225. And now it's going to be tagged on the 225 page. And then I'll probably add a few other tags here, right? Like uh, holistic management, since that's what it's about. Uh, regenerative agriculture, a couple things like that. And it's related to my Rome course capstone project. So I'm going to add the capstone pay tag too. And at this point, I've sort of done enough to the article. I could also do a layer of progressive summarization if I wanted to. Um, I mean, I could say like, you know, maybe we want to highlight this being particularly important. Um, like this as well, it's just, it's a little bit skimmable next time. But now when I'm on the 225 page, I've got these two things that don't have the added tag, right? So I still need to include them. Uh, and I'm starting to fill out everything else that needs to go in the medley. And when I go back to inbox, now there's one fewer thing for me to review because I've processed that page. All right. And so, you, so before so, we do, so you go ahead. do besides tagging things inbox, you don't do any pre, other pre-sorting or pre-strategizing. It's just going in here and kind of seeing what strikes you. Uh, for the medley? Yeah. Typically, yeah. I mean, the other thing I'll do is sometimes if I find something during the week that I know I want to include in that medley, uh, then I'll go ahead and like tag it for the upcoming medley. But I like, I typically, I'll come into inbox and what I might do is something like, you know, in this blueprint for Armageddon, I don't know if I want to include that in this medley. So I'm going to leave it in the backlog because step one is going to be going through the inbox. And in doing this, I've kind of both done my like PKM cleanup for the week and I've written my newsletter. And if I'm looking at this, I don't know if I'm going to have anything else related to like history or war in this medley. And I typically don't like to have sections with just one item. So for now, I'm going to leave it in the backlog. And what I'll do is I'll go to the backlog when I'm like out of stuff to include and I want to add more material or if I want to look for anything else that might be relevant to the medley. So one good example of this is um, these books, The Power Broker and The Logic of Collective Action. I finished these about a month ago. I just haven't found a good medley to include them in because I've been talking about the Rome course and I don't want to distract it by talking about book notes, right? I try to limit the amount I talk about like myself and the things I'm doing versus providing interesting links to other stuff for people to read. So these are just kind of like sitting in the backlog for when there's a good medley to include them. Yeah, I, I love that. I had a similar mindset shift where I Baby. thought as soon as I had anything new to share, I had to be hey. shared immediately. How are you? Hello. How are you? Who's that? Baby, I think you will. Oh, okay. Um, <laughs> I'll take care of it. Uh, I would try to share it immediately. Like I felt like a back, oh, I shouldn't have a backlog. Backlog is bad, is bad. But then I started to fall, uh, fall behind in my weekly newsletter. Like there was too much to share and it got yeah. better because once I was selecting from a group of like 10 or 20 things, it's just what you're saying. I could look for patterns and it, it looked like I put all the strategy into it. You know, now let me, like this week, let me share five things about, I don't know, time tracking. It looks like I did all this research and did all this stuff when really I just let things pile up and then went in to write the newsletter and picked whatever was related. Yeah. It, it makes it a little bit easier to create themes in the newsletter too. Uh, just cause you know, one, you can pick the stuff that you've got in your backlog that is related and creates a more interesting, like cohesive newsletter. And uh, because of some of the power of Rome, you can pull out a lot of your past information to reference to. So I'm going to show you an example of that because one thing, that I like to do when I kind of start this process is go into Readwise and make sure that everything is up to date. So for example, I know I read some stuff on Instapaper this morning after the last sync, 
So I want to kind of manually run the Instapaper sync. And yeah, you can see it's pulling in a few of these other articles I read. And the great thing about this is as soon as it pulls them in, which just take like a couple of seconds, uh, we'll be able to go run the export into Rome. And then these will be in my inbox as well, uh, which is going to help with like putting everything together. Well, so well, let that run. We'll that. Um, will, any questions you want to surface from the chat? I don't know yeah. if this is a stopping point now, but. No, this is a great stopping point. Yeah, I mean, there's a handful of just tactical questions. Um, I guess we had a question earlier uh, towards the beginning. Uh, Nat, if you create pages for each article you plan to share, or do you just link from your daily note? Uh, there's uh, The question is, I'm fuzzy on when to create pages and when to just use the daily note. Yeah, my rule for that is basically that I create a new page whenever there's more than one highlight or note from the article. So if I'm going to be pulling out a few highlights, right, or a few different notes from it, then it makes sense for it to have its own page. But if it's just a small thing, so like this is a good example, right? This is a document on Airbnb's guidance on tax deductions, right? So I'm just going to link this, say, yeah, this chats, right? Airbnb, right? Taxes, something like that. Uh, and then I can delete this inbox and I might actually, you know what, I'll throw this in the medley backlog as well. Because this is kind of like an interesting document that somebody had sent me that might be useful to people. Uh, and then I'll delete the inbox tag. But since I don't have any highlights from it yet, I don't really need to make a page for it. Uh, that said, you know, what I might do is whenever I go back and read it, then I want to change it to, you know, an actual page. But for now, it could just be a link that pops up if I go to my Airbnb page, right? Because now uh, if I'm on Airbnb and I'm looking at, okay, you know, info on Airbnb, right? Here it is. And you know, again, I could make a page for it in the future, but for now it's totally fine. Just kind of being a standalone link that I could still include uh, in the medley. Great. Um, we had another question from Stephanie. Nat, how do you mark your notes to distinguish between quotes, paraphrases, and your own ideas that arise from when you're learning? Such as ever yeah, I, I do that poorly is my answer, unfortunately. Um, I mean, I, I don't like having quotations around the quotes from the article. So typically my rule is if it's something like this, right, where uh, I've got like all these highlights from this piece, these are all going to be the actual lines from the article or from the book. And then if I want to comment on them, I'll put it as sub bullets. So, you know, I, let me try to find a good example here. Um, right, I might put down here like related Stephen King on writing, right? Like, cause I know there's something that he talked about in that book as well. And I kind of want to tie these together, right? Uh, or if I have commentary, I can put that as a sub bullet, things like that. And I just assume the top level bullets on an article or a book are going to be the actual quotations uh, and not, you know, any of my own ideas from it. If I'm going to have a lot of reactions to it, what I might do is create like a highlights section like this and then do, you know, ideas here. And then I could take all of these and indent them under the highlights and then you know have my own ideas right like seems like a common man, that not being able to type is frustrating but it's okay that experts don't feel they ever had a plan it just happened to them right i could add something like that up here in the ideas and then it's really really clear um what's mine and what's theirs great um I mean, there's, a, there's a handful of others, maybe one more. Um, mm -hmm. Oh, that was, we already asked that one. Um, oh yeah, what, this is from Santosh. Why don't you make it a brackets medley 225 inbox and use that as your inbox? Um, is, it would just be too many pages, I think, you know, cause I could like, I could have a medley 225 inbox, but then, and I did something similar to that in the past. The downside was, I would frequently lose articles because then I'd have to, you know, when I'm writing 226 or 227, if anything didn't get used on 225, I'd have to go back and change all of those links to be 226, 227, stuff like that. Whereas if it all just sits in the backlog until I know I want to include it, I never have to go back and update which medley it says it's going into. 
But this one I know is going into 225. So I'm going to go ahead and change that. Cool. That's a good chunk of the questions for now. I'll keep tracking them. Cool. All right. So at this point, it looks like everything, yep, everything that I was reading is uh, pulled into the inbox. So this is where things get a little bit more fun. So let's say that I want to include this article, uh, which is you know, related to like, it's going to be related to COVID-19. It's going to be related to kind of like the weird sort of recession that we're in. Um, economics, e-commerce, right? There's a ton of topics here that this is related to. And this has been another very common theme in the medley for anybody who's already on it. You know that I, I like to talk about COVID, especially its effect on businesses. So this is definitely one that's going to make it into the medley, right? I'm going to say, okay, let's put this in 225. And when I've got something like this, where I know uh, I've got a couple things I want to relate to it, what I might do is just uh, I'll shift click on the title, which is going to open it in the sidebar. And then I'll click on 225, which is going to take me back to here. And I'm going to make a new section called the world of business in COVID. I'll make that H2. Is this an H2 or an H3? Yeah, H2. And then under it, I'm going to start by talking about this article, right? So I'm going to say, New York Times did a good analysis on how consumer spending habits have changed during COVID-19. So just a little intro like that. Link it. Okay. Um, and then I'm going to start talking about uh, you know, some of the key points in the article, right? One thing that stands out is how much business changed differently in different states. Okay, now this is where Rome starts to get kind of cool, is if we've got kind of sections here that uh, we want to use in the post, instead of like copying and pasting them, what we can do is we can do like a, an alt drag. So I'm going to hold down alt and drag this over. And now that uh, block of text is on this page as well. But you can see from this little orange bar that it's referencing a block on another page. So if we close this for a second, if I click on this, it will take me to this block of text on this page. And then if I'm on this page and I see this block of text, you can see this little one by it, which tells me this block of text has been referenced somewhere else in my database. In this case, Medley 225. Now I might want to add some bolding or add some other text to it. So I don't want to keep it exactly the same, but I do want to keep that reference. So I'm going to click on this and then I'm going to click replace with text and alias. And now I've got this little star here after the text, which tells me it originally came from this page, but I can start, you know, editing this to however I want it. So I might, you know, highlight this and I'll put it in quotations. Whoops. I'll put quotation marks around it and I might make it italics just to be really clear that this is a quote from the article. Uh, and then maybe I'll add some more commentary after it, right? Uh, or I say like, you know, clearly in some states they've been able to rebound pretty quickly. Meanwhile, in others, and then I'm going to shift click this again, just to bring it back up, shift click that to get the whole article. Uh, I'll drag in this Massachusetts quotation, right? So I'll say Massachusetts, we'll do the same thing, right? Text and alias, maybe put some of the same formatting again. And the reason I like doing this is now whenever I'm on this article in the future, I know that I referenced it in Medley 225 and I specifically called out these passages, right? They're all linked into it. And in the future, if I come back to it, you know, for another article or another Medley where I'm talking about COVID, I'll know when I've talked about it in the past. Because the other thing that I could do here is if I'm working on 225 and I'm saying, okay, what else related to like COVID do I want to talk about? I might open up my COVID-19 page uh, in the sidebar and then say, okay, show me all of my COVID-19 mentions. Now, this is a huge number of mentions, so I don't really want all of them, but I can filter it and I can say, show me any related to a COVID-19 recession. 
this is a great example of this, right? Like V-shaped recovery for me, L-shaped recovery for thee. This is a really good article on how different people are being affected by the virus differently and how different businesses are being affected by it. And I know that I mentioned this 15 weeks ago in Medley 210, right? So I can say like, this reminds me of what, I believe this is by Bern Hobart. Let me just double check that. Diff is Burns newsletter, I think. Yeah, cool. This reminds me of what Bern Hobart said in his article on, you know, Talking about later. Um, small businesses just evaporate, real estate's taken over by big companies. Um, you know, some of these are gonna run out of business really run out of business really quickly. Uh, the, the thing from this article that actually reminded me of the V-shaped recovery, if we bring it back up, is there was this line down here about how, like, despite fewer visits to bars, Americans kept drinking. And, you know, Drizzly, yeah, Drizzly mini bar sales are up 500%, right? So I actually want to call that out as well. Um, and some businesses, especially online ones, are doing exceptionally well at replacing what physical businesses used to do. I'm just going to replace it with text this time because... I'm lazy. Now we can link it to the burn article better, right? <clears throat> Businesses in a position to shift to online more rapidly are going to survive and probably come out better than before. First businesses that can't adapt. And then we could pull an article or a quotation from the Bern Hobart article as well. All right, so now <clears throat> you're kind of seeing how as we link things together over time, we get to start tying ideas and you know items in our database together better and better. And now I know that this has been referenced in Medley 210, but also if I'm on this page, uh, this passage has a link to you know Medley 225, right? So I can see both places that I've added it, and I could even add you know a second reference here, since I do like tracking where I reference things in different medleys. And if I'm on the medley 225 page, it's not gonna show up down here because I've already filtered out anything that's been added before. But if I ever remove this, I'll be able to see everything that I referenced. Plus, if I'm ever on this page, I'll know that I've used it in medley 210 and in medley 225. Yeah, is this um, interesting? Do you wanna continue? I feel like this is such a good window into the process. Do you want to yeah. keep, keep, keep going and do the other sections or are they going to be pretty similar? Or should we go, there's a, there's a bunch of more specific questions in the chat we can also go to. The mechanics are going to be pretty similar. We won't, I'm trying to think if there's anything else we're going to do new mechanically. I think the only other thing that, you know, we could touch on is let me just see. A lot of it's going to be the same. So for example, uh, one of the articles I know I want to, include, if we go back to inbox, one of the articles I know I want to include is this Life is Short article by Paul Graham. Because one, you know, it's just like a really beautiful article, but it also ties into a lot of ideas from other pieces I've talked about. So one example would be, there's this great book, Moonwalking with Einstein. And there's this cool idea in the book about how you can expand your perception of time so yeah, I'm working on <clears throat> expanding the of time so it feels like I live longer, right? And one thing I would definitely want to do is copy a link to this reference. And then in 225, 
where I referenced the Paul Graham Life is Short article. Uh, I'm going to make a section here probably called like lengthening time. And I'm just going to paste that in as a placeholder for now because I know that this is going to be related to the Paul Graham article. I'm going to want to include both of these. So it's just kind of, it's going to be, there's a lot of similar stuff you can do by going through uh, any of your past articles, any of your past book notes, like using all of the information collection and organization you do in building a second brain to kind of navigate your database and find more information. Like, and this is a perfect example, right? How digital media distorts our sense of time. This is an incredible article by Aaron Lewis about how like the way that we interact with the web changes how we perceive time. And this wasn't, even something I was thinking of including in this medley or relating to the Paul Graham and uh, Josh Foyer pieces, but it fits perfectly with that whole theme. And I've kind of just like accidentally rediscovered it uh, here while we're talking. And I'd throw this how to time travel article by Brian Chesky, one of the founders of Airbnb in there as well. Cause like these all fit into very similar ideas and they can all play together into a really nice theme in one section of the newsletter. So just doing a good job of like tagging and sifting through your information allows you to kind of like rediscover and create these connections that you might not otherwise uh, intuitively make. Amazing. This is so cool. It's really cool to see a concrete example. Um, Nat, uh, Will and I both have calls at the top of the hour. Do you want to okay. finish at that time or do you, do we, we could also make you the host and you could stay off, stay on a bit. Yeah. After. Why don't you just make me the host? I'll, I'll stay on and answer questions as long as uh, people want to keep asking them. Um, can't say all night, obviously, but I, I had budgeted until 3.20, 3.30, assuming people wanted to keep asking questions. Uh, I will say that, <clears throat> shameless plug, uh, com slash power of Rome is like an email course that goes over a lot of this stuff. So you can check that out or you can just check out the course that I'm doing, part of Forte Labs now called Effortless output in Rome. That's at effortlessoutput.com. Um, but I'm going to try to cover everything I possibly can based on what people want to hear uh, while we are here. Let me just get the chat back though, because I had like hidden it. There's, right, some, cool. there's some bigger um, questions that I liked. Uh, like Wendy asked, I'll kind of broaden the question a bit, but what are the areas of your life that you use this? I'm sensing there's some people in the chat that are really hardcore Rome users. They probably know all the YouTube channels and all the Twitter accounts and all the places to go. But for people just coming into this world, like what are the different parts of your life that you use this tool for? I literally use it for everything. I mean, let's see. This is my, like, uh, that's not gonna be very helpful. Like this is my plan for the week. So this is like all of the core work that I need to get done this week that's not specifically related to the growth machine stuff that's in my Asana. So these are all of my, you know, big projects, right? Version two of the Rome course, the Almanac newsletter, uh, this article that I wrote, I can actually check this off, but, and you can see there's like due dates for all of these, right? So when I'm, uh, and this is all stuff that, you know, we cover in the email course and the real course, but when I'm on like my homepage, uh, I cleaned it up a little bit for this workshop. What it normally looks like is this, and this is a text expander snippet I have that kind of like fills in everything I need to get done um, for the day. So this is like, this is an opportunity to do morning pages in the morning, everything that I wanna kind of like dump out of my head. And this is kind of a cool use case because when you do morning pages, uh, I can start, you know, writing what I'm thinking about, uh, but I can also open the morning pages page in the sidebar and I can drag in some of these prompts, right? Like, what am I excited about? And then like, I'm excited about the workshop with Tiago. And what's super cool about journaling this way is see how there's like 26 references to what am I excited about? I can click on that and I can see all of these things I've written about that I'm really excited about recently. And <clears throat> uh, even within this, right? Like we can filter um, some of the other stuff, right? Like here's times I was excited about growth machine and here's times I was excited about reading and all of that. Or, you know, we can also look at the bad side, right? Like, what am I worried about? Or like, what's nagging me or what do I need to prioritize? Um, and so it's like an incredible journal in that sense. Uh, and then you can kind of like say, okay, I'm done with my journal. I'm going to like set up my plan for the day. So what, what is due today? What needs to get done? I'm going to look at my linked references for today and I'm going to say, all right, show me all the to-dos 
that are definitely due today. All right, I have to finish the advanced functions videos for the Rome course. I have to send a follow-up email for everybody who, <laughs> for everyone who attends this webinar, right? So like I still have to do that. But then here's a bunch of to-dos that are overdue, right? And this is just a, a special query. This is like a fairly advanced Rome feature that we go into more, but um, uh, I don't use a separate task manager, Athena. So I do everything in Rome for all of my task management, except for stuff related to my team at, at Growth Machine, the marketing agency I run. Um, but this pulls in all of my overdue tasks from the last month. And this pulls in all of my tasks that are considered top priorities based on me adding the top priority tag. So you can, you can really like do everything in it once you kind of like grok the whole power of the tool. And the reason I like doing everything in it is just because of this ability to link everything together, right? Like you saw, you know, just while we've been hanging out here, I, you know, recorded that I did this workshop with you, Tiago. I recorded that I was excited about doing it in my morning pages, right? Like you kind of get to link together your productivity, your knowledge management, your personal CRM, your journal, all of it into this very <clears throat> navigable and rediscoverable workspace, which I find super magical, even though it looks like kind of a obscure mess <laughs> if you don't know how to like read the matrix, so to speak. Um, when you're working on it. Yeah, I, it's really interesting. It's like you're, coll you're collapsing all those activities. Your book notes, your journaling, your newsletter writing, your project management, all sort of just become tags. They become like strands within your own database. Yeah, and I think that this is like a really, it's kind of an important question you have to ask yourself is like, do you want to optimize for uh, functionality and uh, potential or do you want to optimize for like ease of use and like user experience because this is very low on user experience and ease of use uh, especially as like a new user but it's very high on like potential right there's like a ton you can do with it once you know how to work in it but you know this is like a really nice uh, custom CSS theme called Land Decker. I did not create this I just slightly modified someone else's but even with this, this is still kind of like an ugly system, right? Like it does not look as nice as Notion. Uh, and, but I'm okay with that because I know that it lets me do all of this really cool like intermingling of everything in my life. And I probably spend like half of my day in Rome at this point, uh, just because I'm doing so much of my writing and planning and like obviously like preparing stuff for these presentations, laying out stuff that I'm working on, going over my projects. You can see how robust a project can get as you like break everything out, right? You're collapsing bullets and there's bolts inside bullets with their own to do's. And <clears throat> it's, there's, there's a lot of potential to go pretty deep as you get more and more familiar with the tool. Yeah. Yeah. Cynthia had a good question. What do you do about offline access? If, if you're doing so much of your life in Rome and I'll add to that mobile, what do you do when you don't have an internet connection? Uh, if that ever comes up or on your phone? Yeah. So not having internet connection honestly just doesn't come up. Uh, it works fine on airplanes if you've got the downloaded Roam like I do. So if you're if you're using Roam on your browser, you can click these and there's a button to like download Roam. Can't remember what it is. Um, I would strongly recommend it if you're using it a lot, just because one, it lets you have a standalone Roam instance outside your browser, and I personally like having it super full screen. So it's really nice for that. And it does local caching better. So I worked on my database for like three hours on a plane with no internet access, reconnected to internet later and updated totally fine. In terms of mobile, I, one, I generally don't like trying to be productive on my phone. I think that it's just not what the device is made for. Um, so I don't really worry too much about having access to my productivity tools on my phone. But then mobile capture is actually pretty good. So if you load Roam on your phone, it will default you to something called like the quick capture page where you can just type something and then hit save. And it will get saved into a block on that day's daily note under this hashtag quick capture. And I'll usually just add like an inbox tag to it as well. Um, or, you know, if it's a to do, it'll just get saved as to done. Like this is a perfect example. I was. I was driving out to like Bastrop, Texas, and I saw this company, Arnold Custom Hold Builders, with like tiny homes on the side of the road, and they looked really cool. And so I just like wrote down the URL and tagged it with tiny homes on the quick capture in Rome and just saved it. And I figured I could update it later. Um, 
So quick capture is pretty good. And then it doesn't require you to like optimize a lot of stuff on the go. But then also now there's the Readwise integration. If you're like reading on Instapaper or seeing something on Twitter or whatever, you can just feed it into Readwise and then they take care of a lot of the saving of the info for you. Very cool. Very cool. Let's see here. So you don't use a task manager anymore. All the tasks are in Rome. All the tasks are in Rome. You know, again, with the exception of when I have to work with other people, right? Like multiplayer Rome is not very good yet. So if you're doing like a company wiki or you're managing a project with a bunch of other people, Asana, Notion, those things are going to be way better. But for personal project management and for like creative stuff, I love having it all in Rome. Tell, let's talk a little bit about the course. If someone is interested with, with the last few minutes, at least before Will and I jump off, if yeah. someone is interested in learning from you, want to join either either version of your course, could you talk about those two versions and like what kind of person should choose the self-paced versus the live sessions? Yeah, that's a great question. Um, so the course is basically getting you from zero to everything I've done today as quickly as possible. Uh, you know, the goal of it was like, I, I found out about Realm pretty early. Uh, it clicked really quickly for me, primarily because I had really been frustrated with trying to implement building a second brain ideas in Evernote. Evernote felt like such a clunky, outdated tool. And Realm just like clicked really fast for me as the potential to do kind of like all the stuff that I was showing you today. So the course just kind of like walks through, walks through getting you from zero to expert very quickly um, by focusing on completing a project. So I alluded to that earlier, but the course centers around like doing a capstone project where you start by uh, researching everything related to the topic you're interested in, uh, organizing all of your notes on the topic, uh, planning out the project for the topic, and then actually creating whatever it is you wanna make. So what's kind of fun with that is we've got the effortless output forum um, you know, which is in circle and people are starting to get through the intro materials and they're starting to share some of their capstone projects that they're working on. So like, you know, project on building good habits, theology and plain language, right? People are working on really interesting things. And so you just get to pick a topic you're really interested in learning more about. And this is like your excuse to study something that you're curious to learn more about. Um, how entrepreneurship acts on humans, like it's a fun idea. So, uh, and we kind of like go through that together and you learn how to build and organize a Rome database. And then there's bonus videos on like advanced features, like learning how to do these queries. There's bonus use cases. Like I do all my recipe management in Rome. So whenever I want to cook, I have like all that organized in Rome. We go over that using it as a CRM. It's kind of like making it into your all-in-one knowledge management tool. And then the question of doing it self-paced versus live. Uh, a lot of it comes down to whether you're somebody who just wants to like watch all the videos over the weekend, go bang it out yourself, figure it out as you go. Or if you know that you benefit from uh, joining a live cohort and like seeing more examples and asking questions and being engaged and also like having a bit of a forcing function to actually implement and do the work. Um, I personally really like having a group to learn stuff with because I know that I might be really good for a couple of days at implementing something I want to learn, but then I like get distracted and I fall off and I don't make time for it. Live sessions are great because we're going to do five, like sit down hour, hour and a half-ish sessions going through parts of the course material and implementing them together and like studying and working on our own capstones together. And I'm excited about it because I have to like pick a new capstone to study with everyone and everyone else gets to pick a project they want to work on. So it's, it's really up to you just like how you find you learn whether or not you want to be like part of an active community learning it together or just do the like lone wolf burned out in a weekend kind of thing. And the prices for those two are 250 for the self-paced version, correct? And correct. then 500 and for how many implementation sessions? Uh, five. Cool. And when yeah, is this? So it'll be over five weeks. And deadline and is September 8th. So the, the first live session will be on September 8th. Um, and then we'll be doing it every Tuesday for five weeks. Okay. Awesome. Yeah. Um, I'm going to make you host. I got to go run to my cool. next meeting. But thank you everyone for being here. This is super informative. Um, and join us if this is something you want to get into, either self-paced or via the community. It's really amazing to learn with others, especially in this time of COVID where there's so little human contact. 
Um, so have fun and don't, don't be too, take it easy on that. <laughs> 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 hey, we, we still got over 300 people here, so I'm happy to hang out and answer questions for a little while. I, I'm ready. Okay. Well, Thanks, guys. Have fun. Tiago. See you, Tiago. See you, Will. See you, guys. All right. I feel like the parents have gone, and now we can just have fun. <laughs> Hey, Nat. Oh, my gosh. I don't know how they manage this. Hey, Dean. How's it going? Pretty good. Um, really dumb question, but what custom CSS uh, theme are you using? Oh, it looks really yeah. good. Thank you. Um, you know what? This is the other cool thing uh, with the course, although actually anybody can access it, is, and I'm going to share this in the chat. Uh, oh, by the way, this is how Quick Capture works. If you save something on your phone, you'll, you'll get a prompt like this to sync your Quick Capture notes. But the, the theme I'm using is called Lay and Decker. But uh, in, I've got a public Rome yeah, database. And you've modified called, it a bit because it looks a, a little less uh, yeah, pastel -y. The, <laughs> Yeah, yeah, the color's a little bit different. Uh, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to share a link to how I modified it for all of you. Um, I also changed it so that the, like the tag styles are for articles and books and podcasts, the things that I use the most. So if you're doing the course, you're bringing in my other materials, it'll work really nicely with uh, implementing, implementing that theme. Um, if this loads, this database is hard to load sometimes because so many people have accessed it. But once it does, I'll, I'll share the link with everyone. Hi, um, I had a Kelly. question. Hi. So I'm in the cohort um, number 11 here with Build a Second Brain. Um, I've been using Evernote for a decade. I'm probably going to stick with that for now with that. One yeah. of the things I've been looking at with, um, with uh, Rome, and actually I got to build a second brain through your Instapaper highlight on an article a couple of weeks ago. And so kind of following the trail went through. Rome, Rome is attracting me because I'm doing these projects where I, I want to start putting in a bunch of information and linking it and starting to write. So similar to what you're doing, when you think of using it as like part of your tool stack rather than as you know doing all of your second brain work within Rome, how do, was there some kind of link, something I can do between Evernote and Rome that would allow me to start to make these, you know, the quick writing that you're doing where you you know you do your double brackets and you're making these links. I want to I'm wanting to do something like that, but I don't think I want to do everything in Rome right now. Any thoughts on that? Yeah, I would say you could just start with one topic area in Rome and start bringing over your notes from Evernote related to that. I still haven't migrated everything from Evernote into Rome. And I think that, I know I've seen a few questions about that. So like, you know, how do you migrate from Evernote to Rome? I recommend not doing it actually and just kind of doing it as needed. And so for you, I'd probably say, you know, whatever topic it is you want to explore, just start bringing in some notes related to that and start linking them together. Because I think Rome actually is a lot less intimidating if you pick one topic and just start exploring that. So my, my capstone in the self pace is related to regenerative agriculture. And it's a lot easier to start to see the value if you just focus on one small area and pull in notes related to that versus trying to like move all 3000 Evernote notes in at once. Um, and then you'll still have your Evernote as like a reference database that you can bring stuff in as needed, but you don't have to spend, uh, I mean, I literally spent a week pulling in all of my book notes and most important article notes over like a holiday, uh, which is not a, like, <laughs> it's not a very reasonable use of time, I think for most people. Uh, so doing it slowly and kind of piecemeal like that, I think would be a really good way to start. And then I got a question in uh, Circle. You mentioned uh, that the para method, as far as areas, resources, and archives, doesn't translate over to Rome. Uh, mm -hmm. Could you go into deeper explanation as to why you feel that way? Yeah, definitely. Uh, so the main reason is that para is a filing system, right? So it's it's a way to store information when you're stuck in a like hierarchy-based environment, like Evernote or uh, Google Drive or Dropbox, and to some extent, Notion, right? But Rome is kind of a different information organization paradigm where there is no filing and there is no like hierarchy of information. It's all just supposed to be interrelated. So like putting something in an area versus a resource doesn't really make 
uh, doesn't even really make sense because everything can be in multiple areas at once. So let me try to find a good example here. Um, Cause there's lots of things that fit into an area of your life and then also fit into a resource. So if we were looking at okay, yeah, like white oak pastures, right? So this is a company that uh, does like regenerative agriculture farming. And if I were adding tags to them, right? they would be related to the area of the Monday medley, which is an area for me because uh, they actually sponsored my newsletter at one point, but they're also related to the resource like regenerative agriculture, right? And so which of these places does it go? Like it doesn't really go in either, right? Mm -hmm. you, we don't have to decide is this part of an area or is this part of a resource? We can just put it in all of them. And since it doesn't, since we don't need to decide where to put anything, we don't really need to create that like filing designation of, well, these are my projects, and these are my areas. And like the projects get archived because you don't really ever have to archive anything. Um, the one caveat I did make was for projects, right? So if we're, no, don't print things. Uh, I do like to use the projects tag because like tracking something as a project can be very helpful. So if we go back to or like the Rome course V2, I have this set up as a project. Mm -hmm. And what this lets me do is it lets me see all of my projects that are related to personal stuff versus say like growth machine. And it lets me see my active projects. Like once I finish this and it gets out, I might change this to completed or archived, but on my projects page, I've got some queries that uh, show me all of my active projects at any time, all of my completed projects at any time. And that distinction is still very useful for while something is kind of in transit. Perfect, thank you. Yeah, no problem. You tag multiple pages at once? Yeah, definitely. I mean, that's sort of what we've been doing throughout the course, right, is, uh, we've been like adding a bunch of tags. I mean, cause each of these are actually pages, right? Projects is a page. Um, the like personal is a page, active is a page, Tiago is a page, David's a page. So anytime we're adding one of these tags, we're linking to tons of pages or each of these time we add a tag, we're linking to one page. We can add a lot of these in any individual blocker bullet. Uh, Diana, there's not really a good way to keep track of all your tags. It's sort of a combination of memory and rediscovery. One thing that helps a lot is if we go back to, like, let's say that we're on this white oak page and I'm trying to think of what things I need to tag it as. I might open my regenerative agriculture page and then I might say, what else relates to regenerative agriculture? So like what else is linking to it? And this is going to show me kind of like everything else. So is white oak related to holistic management? Yeah, I could add that. I could add environmentalism. I could add meat. I could add climate change, add nutrition, health. And if you're more of a visual person, this is kind of cool. You can see like a visual graph of it. And so from white oak, I could click to like regag and then see, okay, what else is regag linked to? Um, force of nature, white oak pastures, holistic management. What is that linked to? Uh, you know, Alan Savory, what's he linked to, right? You can find other stuff that's been interlinked before just by going through these like linked reference graphs. Hi, Nat. This is Amaya. In hey, Maya. Speaking about visual people, how do you keep track of images? Do you do a lot of image uh, research? I personally don't do a ton of stuff with images, but Rome actually supports them pretty well. So if we go to um, this article that I was working on, uh, where is it? There we go. Oops. Cool. Uh, you can actually drag in images from other places or just copy and paste them and Rome will upload and store them on Firebase for you. And then uh, you'll have them like kind of right here in your database and you can add tags to them. Or I could tag this like EPA uh, or whatever else I wanted to add to it. And then if you want to copy and paste this into a Google Doc or a newsletter or 
uh, WordPress or anything else, it goes over really cleanly. So this works super well. You can embed YouTube videos. Uh, they've got a PDF reader. So you can embed a PDF. I think it's like, what is this? Like slash PDF. It's something super simple. Um, or maybe you just paste it in and it works. But uh, yeah, if you're a more visual person, I mean, if you're super visual, Roam is probably not a great tool because it's so text heavy, but it does handle images and videos very well. Thank you. Hey, Nat, this is John. Yeah. Uh, along, those, along those lines, do you, are you aware of any uh, good ways to uh, get drawings, um, hand-drawn sketches into Rome? That's interesting. Uh, well, I mean, there'd be a couple ways. There's a, there is a Rome share shortcut for iOS. So if you're, if you're drawing something by hand on like your iPad or if you draw something, you take a picture of it, there is a share shortcut that you can download. Um, if you search Rome share shortcut and click around, you'll find it. This is it. Um, and that lets you immediately share stuff into your Rome database from your phone. So that's pretty powerful. Um, the other option would be if it's, if it's like a digital hand-drawn thing, then um, obviously you can always like airdrop it to your computer and just drag it in. Uh, but if you're like, if you're hand sketching something, yeah, I mean, yeah, I guess you, you'd have to take a picture of it and just share it with yourself and drag it in. It's probably going to be the easiest way. I don't think there's any kind of read wise visual integration, um, which would make sense since it's not like written content, but that probably make the most sense. Gotcha. Thank you. Um, like, there's not a great way to do recurring dates, unfortunately. There are some, like, Alfred or other workflows that uh, can do it for you, but there's no good native support for any kind of recurring tasks or recurring events. Oh, yeah, Kevin. Uh, you literally can just copy and paste from Roman to ConvertKit, and it goes over super cleanly. Like, if you, the, the main trick is, let me show you last week's medley. The, the big trick is to right click this and um, normally it's gonna be viewed as bulleted list, right? With bullets. But if you right click the heading of the page and change to view as document, that gets rid of the bullets and turns it into paragraphs. And the headings will transfer over, the links will transfer over, all of this will copy over really cleanly into ConvertKit, WordPress, Webflow, wherever you need it. I will say on ConvertKit, it doesn't work in the new editor. You have to click to the legacy editor to have it go in cleanly. Yeah, document mode is sick, which is also really nice if you don't like seeing bullets while you're writing. Sometimes when I'm drafting, I don't want to see bullets. I want it to look like paragraphs. It's just like a visual thing, but it makes a difference. Uh, Joshua, yeah, I deep link to Google Docs and stuff a lot. Uh, especially if I'm writing an article and I don't want to work on it in Rome anymore. Sometimes I find that switching to a Google Doc helps shake things up. So let me see if I have an example here. This is an article I published a few weeks ago, I think. Yeah, exactly. So I started the draft in Rome, but I wasn't super happy with it and felt kind of stuck. So I just linked to a Google Doc here. And then, you know, here's where I'm working on it on Google. Uh, I'll do this with Asana a lot too. If there's some important Asana tasks that I feel like I really need to make sure I get done, I'm not always good at double checking Asana. So I might put those in Rome. Or uh, the other thing I'll do a lot is I keep a lot of SOPs and processes in Notion, both for Growth Machine and for uh, my VA. And so I might put those into Rome notes as well so that I know where in Notion to go get them from. So... Uh... Maybe I can jump in with, uh, uh, by the way, uh, thanks a lot for the talk. Um, maybe yeah, I can course. jump in with a challenge. So I saw that you were using uh, links a lot in the way of tags. So for example, you would tag things with inbox and then you would go to the inbox page, which is, which is basically empty and you're only looking at the list of backlinks. Yeah. So, Kind of my challenge would be, couldn't you do this in Evernote if you just use tags? For example, you would have an inbox tag or you would have a tag saying episode number 225 and so on. And wouldn't you get basically the same effect? And I, I guess you don't, but I would be interested in why not. 
Yeah, I think the big difference is it's like if we're doing tags in Evernote, I don't even know what my Evernote looks like, so I'm gonna bring it up, but I don't even know what data is gonna pop up. So if it's anything sensitive, I'll just close it because I didn't scrub it for this. But uh, I mean, as I remember tags in Evernote, they're just up here, right? So when we're adding like a tag, we're gonna um, put it on the document itself, right? Say like company growth. But if this individual tag here is really related to biology, I can't just go like hashtag biology, right? And mm -hmm. so if I just wanted this line to relate to my biology page, I couldn't do that. And now I'm kind of, now it's, and now if I want to go to the biology tag, like, or, you know, whatever would have been it, right? Or the company growth tag, and we click on this, this whole note pops up, but I couldn't like highlight a specific paragraph to be related to that one idea. So that's like the really big difference to me um, is there's just like, it's much more limited feature of tagging in Evernote versus what you could do in Rome, right? If we go to that same, if we go to that same piece in Rome, scale book, and you know, up here it's related to company building. I can open that in the sidebar and I can say, okay, show me all the other stuff related to company building. Like already we've kind of gone way beyond the tag structure in Evernote, right? But then if we have this one line down here, where was it, right? And I had already tagged it as aging, right? So this pops open we look at aging. We see, okay, everything I've got reference to aging. Uh, this article by Nick Bostrom, a couple passages in scale, the blue zones, right? It's just like the tagging system is so much more robust compared to what you're able to do with them in Evernote. It's a very good question though, because that was like my first thing when I looked at it too. I was like, can you just do this exact same thing in Evernote, right? But yeah. uh, as you play around with it and you start using it, especially on the block level versus the page level, it, it really pops kind of like what the opportunities are for it. Thanks a lot. Yeah, no problem. Hey, Nat. I had a hey. question about your, uh, you know, the way you're writing technique, I guess. Uh, so how do you, I, I've started using the writing inbox recently and I absolutely love it. Um, how do you decide, or do you even decide what goes in the writing inbox versus in your uh, medley backlog? Oh, I see what you mean. So like, you mean an inbox of things for me to write or an inbox of things I read? Yeah. So um, I, I have kind of a separate outside of Rome inbox, um, but yeah, I guess the, the inbox that you showed, um, I, I guess that's more of a, I read this and I have notes on it inbox, uh, which is kind of how I, I use mine as well. Uh, yeah. so yeah. So do you, when you have this, do you at the, simultaneously put every article that you've already read into your medley backlog or how, how do you, how do you use that workflow? Oh yes. Yeah. So this inbox is actually all stuff that I've already read. Anything that I need to read goes to Instapaper. So this is like, you know, the huge backlog of articles that I'm never ever going to get through of things to read. And then I'll just kind of pull from this during the week of stuff that, you know, is interesting. And then I'll archive it in Instapaper after I've took, taken some highlights, those highlights automatically get fed into Readwise. Readwise automatically feeds them to here. And then from here, I can pick what to include in the medley. So I rarely put anything that's to read in my Rome inbox. I just send that straight to Instapaper because it's just a better reading experience. And I don't want the whole text of the article to be in Rome. Got it. Thank you so much. That makes perfect sense. Thanks. Yeah, no problem. Hey, Nat, this is uh, John here. Hey, John. Yeah, just, on that, just on that last point, you said um, not wanting the whole text to be in there. When you have brought in large chunks of text, like um, I work in graduate school and stuff, and so it's, there's a, these huge chunks of text that I'm sort of working through, but when I paste them into Rome, it gets really funky. So I just decided not to spend that much time, but I wonder if there's any tips on importing like actual larger chunks of text. Sometimes I do- How are we talking? Like 100,000 words, 10,000 words? Let's say, let's just say something simple like 15 pages of an academic article. Yeah, that I feel like you should be okay. What's happening when you paste it in? Um, at a certain point down, all the like lines get sort of crossed on top of each other. So rather than just pasting it in with a um, with the one bullet, I'll do the sort of I'll 
rather than just pasting it, I'll do like command shift V and yeah. then I'll post it in just within one dot. That seems to work okay, one bullet. But if I just post it in straight and want to have the various bullets, it just gets all sort of collected on top of each other. It's a strange little effect that happens. Huh. I've I could never screen, seen I could that screen before. It. I could screenshot yeah. and show it to you. It's quick yeah, why don't you send it to me afterwards and we can send that over to the Rome team because they'd probably be interested to hear about that. I, I've never heard of that error happening. Um, okay. I have heard of, you know, databases will lag sometimes with too long of notes, but I, I haven't heard of the like doubling up like that. Okay, well, that's helpful. I just see that Rome for me tends to be, it's great for taking notes on articles, but not actually the article itself, similar to the way you were using Instapaper there. Yeah, I would agree with that. I, I don't think, and I have seen some people using it to like put whole text of documents in, and then you might put, you know, chapter one, chapter two, chapter three as links here. Uh, I personally don't like that use case because I think it's it's not a great reading interface. It's more of a like note taking and note saving space. But um, still, you should be able to paste in a 15 page document without it breaking. So okay. I'd be curious to hear what the Rome team thinks of that. And you did say one thing about, you know, dragging images in. I found that, I don't know if anyone else has found this, but dragging PDFs in actually doesn't show the PDF at all. It's just a big old blank space. So I name it on top and then I just sort of collapse the bullet. I don't know if anyone else has huh. been able to actually see any of the documents, similar to Evernote, where you can actually see some or at least one image. You could try it if you dropped one in. Last I tried it, it was working for me. Um... Okay, I don't have a PDF here I can show on chat, but <laughs> uh, I, get, I get tired of going back into Evernote to find the PDF, so I sort of like having the reference there, right there, where I could pull it up if I need to. John, have you forced an update on your database recently? Oh no, I haven't. If you click the three dots, there's this check for updates option. Maybe try that. Oh, it's okay, possible great. that it's possible that if like that for whatever reason you might not have updated in a long time. Mine actually got stuck on an old uh, instance at 1.2 and I was starting to get weird performance, things like that. So if anyone's running into those issues, I would try that as well. And if you're still getting them, then yeah, let's send it to the Rome team because they'd probably like to hear about it. Okay, sweet. Awesome. Thanks. Yeah, no problem. All right, we'll take a few more here. Oh, uh, I don't use any custom JavaScript right now. I... I, I honestly just don't like getting crazy complicated with the things that I'm doing. Uh, I know this seems crazy complicated, but it's fairly simple compared to what some people get with like their really insane Rome JavaScript table, whatever setups. Um, so I haven't played with JavaScript as a lot. I think that there's like a fine line between doing cool stuff with the tool for the sake of doing cool stuff and like doing cool stuff that actually helps you accomplish your goals. And I haven't found a lot of that like super fringe JavaScript stuff that actually helps me accomplish my goals of like note taking and writing. Um, but I'm definitely open to find stuff that does. So now I, also um, plus, Oh, go ahead, Samantha. Oh, I, um, I asked in the forum a few times, but I do um, some professional uh, proposals and I need to put citations at the bottom or footnotes. And so I'm just having trouble like where to put them and how you would organize them so they're easy to access when I'm putting the paper together and have to put the citations in the in the paper. Yeah, well, I would probably, uh, I'd probably do it similar to what I was doing in the medley. So uh, let's just make, oh my gosh, I swear I could type. That's still spelled wrong, but whatever. Uh, so if we, you know, had this, and then we opened up that scale book again. And if I wanted to reference like this block here, mm -hmm. what I'd probably do is, you know, copy it in. I'd change this to, you know, text and alias. And then maybe change this to like a one. And then the one, right, is going to be related to scale. And then down here, we could do something like, footnotes, right? And then under that, we're gonna make this a numbered list. And so now number one is gonna be scale book. And then we're going to just copy a block ref here. Um, or actually, you know what? Maybe we would change it, we do it like this. So we copy this block ref and instead of this one going to the actual book, it would just go down to the bottom of the page. 
So now you could just copy this anytime you need to reference scale. And then if you clicked this later on, you would see every time in your citations that you referenced this while you were working. Does that okay, make sense? So like, Is that what you're trying to do? Or Yeah, so if I wanted to use like, you know, MLA or Chicago style, you would just put instead of one of your um, items would be like where it says tags it would just be citation. So, so I actually don't know anything about MLA in Chicago, unfortunately. Okay. So I, <laughs> I, don't, I don't know how much I could be. Yeah, I just wrote um, this professional proposal and I was doing it in, in here. And then I ended up just ended up moving over to Google after a while because I just got so frustrated with having to track all the footnotes and citations and mm. um, just being able to have them as I go, I guess. Yeah. I mean, so was the problem that it was hard to link from here back to here? Or no, yeah, I was just having trouble thing in a work, like just a way to work it, I guess. Like I had, a, I did a master's a few years ago. And so, you know, I'm reading through like 15 mm -hmm. articles and then writing a summary paper. So as you go along, you've mm -hmm. got to have the actual citation of where it came from, what page it came from, what book it came from, you know, the year. So I was just trying to figure out a way to do that in um, Rome efficiently. Yeah. I mean, I feel like the block references are going to get you there. You'll just have to go back and change this later to be the full name of the book, right? right? But then anytime you reference something from the book, you'll you could just add yeah, you know, this block reference link like this. And then they're all going to show up down here. And this is all going to be referencing the full name of the book here. Um and actually you know it doesn't even need to technically be linked, right? Because uh, although it could be helpful to link it back to where it was in the article, right? I could imagine that if you've got 15 articles you read, you've got a few of them up here, and then you can drag over the passages you want to reference. And then every time you do, you leave in the link to where it was originally. And then when you have to go clean it up later, you can change it to just the numbers down here. Um, this would be a few ways to do it. But I, it is kind of getting to that point of like, is it saving you time or is it being complicated just so that you can use a shiny new tool and it might be getting to the point there of like overcomplicating things just to use the tool, right? So you wanna make sure that it's actually like saving you time and not um, Well, it would save in time way. in future publications if you're reusing some of the same material again or pieces of it because the citations oh, are yeah. already there. Whereas like now I have like, you know, 10 master's articles that's just our papers, but there's no backlinking to the citations. So it would be really nice to be able to have a little bit more networking so you could reuse p good pieces that you've done in, in the past and kind of jump off of them. But I, this is helpful. I think they gave me an idea about how to, how to kind of maybe work it. And that's actually a really good point is you could do one version in Rome so that you keep all of your work linked together and then you export it into Google Docs using something like Rome Tools, which is this awesome tool for like stripping the Rome formatting. Mm -hmm. um, you could export it into Google Docs with that and then finish it there but then you've got a Rome linked version saved in your database so that in the future, you know, every time you've referenced each article that you're referencing and in which paper. Okay. Related to that same point, Matt, hey, this is Spencer. Mm -hmm. um, thanks for sharing all this stuff so far. Is similar to the article that you just showed where you have all the metadata at the top, yeah. one of the thing that I've been doing in my Rome database is actually to condense have another attribute for like a Chicago manual uh, citation style. That's a great idea. And then actually you can just block reference that in a footnote later. So that's just one way to possibly treat that, Samantha. Okay. Um, yeah, because. Related to that, I also use um, ID of the citation. So, for example, in Sotero, or that when you want to use it in Markdown or in Latex, you just have the ID for each one of the articles, and then you copy paste and just change, like, for example, just add the backslash uh, site, and you keep the ID. And it will automatically add the, the citation of the paper. Smart. Yeah, this is definitely a tool I wish I had in college. Hi, I have a question. Hey, Wendy. Hi, um, I wonder if this could be used in order to curate content from TikTok and Instagram. I just discovered Bullying 
that I can connect the Instagram to Instapaper and Instapaper to ROM. That's but cool. I wonder if it's the same thing for TikTok. Do you know or have you heard about any anyone content creator for video and photos that you have in, in contact with? Uh, I mean, you could definitely save links to TikToks and stuff, obviously, right? But that's definitely the least exciting version of what you're talking about. I mean, are you talking about embedding a TikTok in your database and then taking yes. notes on it? So or the most popular TikToks that I found huh. and gathering towards ROM in order to see the common attributes to create new content with all of those TikToks accounts. Huh. Let's, let's just find a video and let's see if we can figure it out. Because there is a web watcher, right? So we can watch this online. Hmm. Yeah, I'm not sure. I mean, you you can embed some stuff. Okay, this is the share link. So if we copy the link and then we go back in, oh. right? But then what if we do an embed? Yeah, I mean, this is YouTube. That's probably not going to work. Yeah. So it works better with YouTube saving. Them. YouTube embeds work very well. Yeah, but I don't know if we're going to be able to embed a TikTok. Oh, that's a good question. Maybe we can do an iframe. That's okay. This would be a good question though, but um, yeah, I'm not sure if there's gonna be a way to do it. Maybe in the future though. I know they're working on supporting more like file systems or like, not file systems, but like files so that you can do more and more stuff in here without having to leave. Like I like that you can embed YouTube videos and just watch them and take notes on them. That's kind of a neat use case. And what about Instagram? I just Google and I just found that they can connect through Instagram paper, but I have never used it. So I wonder if you did. No, I haven't used that either. It's probably going to be the same issue. If there's not a native embed and if iframes don't work, we're probably going to not really be able to do it very well. Okay. Thank but you, you can always, you know, the one thing I would do, right, is I would put a link to the TikTok and then do something like, right, uh, just add all the tags right, that we want related to this, so something like that. And then you can find that TikTok later and you could add a little like description of this video below it. And then if we're ever on like our George Lopez page, we could see like, oh yeah, there was this TikTok where he like did this thing mm -hmm. and that'd help you refine it really well later. Um, but it'd be hard to actually embed it. So it's not like the photographs that they are stored in a separate database, like. Yeah, yeah. Because unfortunately, we can't download a TikTok video, right? It's just a link to stream it. If you download a video, you can upload it into Rome and you can play it, right? So if you've got like a movie file or an MP4, that'll work. But uh, unless you can download the actual TikTok video file, you, you won't be able to embed it in the database. Okay. And the second question is about your course and the class that is about to start. How many hours do you think that one person can commit to it uh, if it's taking the, building the second brain right now? Oh, if you're doing both of them? Yeah, so I want to know. A lot of, a lot of the homework overlaps because they're meant to, or the Rome course is meant to be complementary to Second Brain. So if you're doing, if you're doing the homework stuff for Second Brain, it'd probably be an extra, maybe like thirty to sixty minutes to do the Rome stuff. Um, and but then you'd also not have to do some of the Second Brain stuff because you wouldn't be playing around in Evernote as much. So it might like wash out because you'd be you'd be taking a lot of the second brain materials and just like doing them in Rome instead of Evernote. Um, but there would be some extra stuff that's Rome specific that you might want to play around with, you know, related to extra research for the capstone or organizing things or playing with some of the advanced um, like features and whatnot. But it's definitely going to be a smaller time commitment. It's not going to be like doing two second brains at the same time. Okay, and just to remember, you use the iframe tag, right? Iframe? Yes. Colon and the link of the video. Okay. Yeah. Thank Although you. Although I'm not 100% sure. I know, who was it, Kevin? I just want to try with Instagram stories and Instagram uh, TikTok videos like to see. If yeah, works. try it out and let us know if it works out. All right, thank you.
Rom. All right. Well, we're just at about 3.30. So I think we'll probably go ahead and wrap it up here. Um, you know, last things, if you have any follow-up questions, I'm super active on Twitter. It's just uh, at Nat Eliason and happy to answer any other follow-up questions there, send you any other like useful materials. Uh, the course is at effortlessoutput.com and those live sessions are starting on September 8th. And then if you're, if you want to see more like how to use Rome stuff before deciding if you want to take the course, you can just go to natalison.com slash uh, power of Rome, not the power of Rome, power of Rome, and it will uh, take you here and you can put in your email address for those. But uh, I'll send a follow up email as well with all these links. And uh, thanks everyone for joining. It's a lot of fun.